Hi, Jim Berthold here from OLI Systems, and in today's video, we're going to be trying to get started with the OLI engine in Unisim Design. Okay, so one of the issues we have is that Unisim Design is a program uh, produced by Honeywell, and of course, OLI Systems is a program produced by OLI Systems, uh, and they have to be linked, and we had a previous video on how to link them. Uh, for this, we're just going to use a very small, simple example to show you both the uh, functionality and the uh, power of using the OLI engine inside of Unisim Design. For this example, we're using Unisim Design R451.3, which was a special version created by uh, Honeywell uh, for a client. Uh, and But the steps I'm going to show you are applicable to all versions of Unisim Design. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start a new case. And this brings up a very familiar uh, window. We recommend that you start with the fluid packages. And the OLI electrolyte fluid package is always available. May not be licensed, but it's always available. So I want to add a new fluid package. And I'm going to go down and scroll down until I find it. Okay. So there's the OLI electrolyte fluid package. If you have a proper license to OLI, these other fields become active. For this particular case, I'm going to use the MSC thermodynamic model. You have to make the proper choice at this point because it's you can't undo this uh, this choice. Okay. It's actually doing a build internally and if I bring up some of the win windows here, you can see that it's giving us some diagnostic information. You can go into the component list in a variety of ways. Since we're already on this screen, I'm going to go into component list one and select view. To find the OLI components, we need to use the OLI electrolyte tree. These are all of the OLI species in our database, in the MSC database. And we're going to go ahead and start. You must have water, so H2O. And I did this, I searched for H2O and pressed the enter key. Of course, you could use the add pure. And this will update the screen here, hopefully in a second. Okay. It's been a while since I ran the program, and you can see that it had to build a database. Uh, for this particular example, I'm going to add some sodium chloride, and I'll add the Add Pure button, so, and methanol. All right, so the reason I'm using these is that in the gas hydrate business, where uh, natural gas is being produced from a subsea well, uh, this uh, natural gas, usually methane, will in fact coordinate with water molecules to form what's called a clathrate. These are highly dense regions of material in a gas phase. So if you have sized your piping and pumps and impellers for gases, and suddenly you have something that appears to be a solid coming through the process, you will form uh, this clathrate, and the clathrates can damage process equipment. To break the clathrate, they use a variety of chemicals. A traditional chemical here is methanol. But methanol has some other properties which can get us into trouble. Anyway, so we're going to simulate that with the, the software. I'm done adding my components. If I've forgotten a component, we can come back to the component list and add it. The key here is it must be the OLI electrolyte uh, components. We press Enter here. You can do a variety of things here. We can turn on additional phases here. I'm going to do that in this particular case. And you can go ahead and initialize the electrolyte environment. This is actually going to go into our property generators. Okay, it's done. It doesn't actually tell you it's done, but it's done. And I can view those electrolyte reactions in the trace window. I will go ahead and clear it, and then I will look at them. And these are taken straight from our database. These are the equilibrium expressions I'm going to use. We do not use, from OLI, we do not use any of these other tabs at this point. So just to set up. When we're done, we'll click the X button, okay. and now we're ready to enter the simulation environment. At this point, almost everything you know about Unisim Design is true. There's very little here that we're going to uh, explain to you uh, that's different. So for this particular example, I'm just going to take a separator. I'm going to add two streams to it. So 
sometimes it's easier to go directly into the case stream one and stream two. There will be a vapor outlet, which I'm just going to call vapor, and a liquid outlet, which I'm just going to call liquid. We'll come back to the block in a second. The first stream is going to be a stream that is just sodium chloride and water. Okay, we have to give it a second update. And here's how we do that. We're going to give it a temperature, 25 degrees in our case. The pressure here, um, I'm too lazy to go change my units, but you can. Uh, 101.325 kilopascals, which is one atmosphere. I'm not going to fill in any of the other values here. I'm going to go into composition. Okay. I'm going to change the basis just for this example into moles. And I'm going to add 55.5 moles of water and then 5 moles of sodium chloride. So why 55.5? Okay, this is approximately equal to one kilogram of water. So this makes it a uh, de facto molal concentration, moles per kilogram of water. Uh, you could use any values you want, of course. Uh, it totally normalizes it. Click OK. It'll actually flash it. And it's done. We're going to come back to that in a second. Let's go uh, fill out the other stream. The stream two will be all uh, same conditions, 25 degrees, 101.325 kilopascals, and its composition, again, also in moles. They don't have to be the same basis. It's just easier. And I'm going to add 100 moles, uh, or kilogram moles in this case, of methanol. It will also flash it, and we're done. So let's go back and look at the results. So let's go to stream one. Okay. The, the reporting system in Unisim design doesn't really understand about electrolytes very well. So all you're going to get is what's called apparent speciation. And that's found here in this composition tab. If I scroll outwards, it's going to show me that I've got five moles of sodium chloride. Now we know in water they're going to dissociate. So this is not always the most... Uh, usable values. If I go into electrolytes, however, I'm going to get a lot more interesting information. Okay. The first thing I'm going to get are the bulk per solution properties. The approximate pH of the solution, that's 6.5, which is right. We give you osmotic pressure, ionic strength, heat capacity, and so forth, and surface tension are all returned uh, to the software. We could also look at organic phases. There's none. There's no solid phases here. But what's important here is these scaling tendencies. This is a ratio of the available ions in solution to the uh, theoretical limit, also I know as the solubility product. If that ratio is one or greater, there's a tendency for the solid to form. If it's uh, one or less, the tendency to form a solid is low. So you can see that all of the numbers here are very, very low. If I go back into the aqueous button, click composition, I will actually get the individual ion concentrations, both in molar flows uh, for the species. We actually calculate molality here as well. This is a unisim function, and you can see the numbers are virtually the same the way I did it. Okay. If I go look at the methanol, uh, the important thing here, let's go look at solids. There are no solids uh, in this, uh, this stream. If I go into the stream 2, which is pure methanol, uh, again, I can look at electrolytes or composition. Uh, the pH is an odd number. It's a huge number. It's 10 to the plus 30. Uh, that would be a very, very strange pH. It's so strange that it actually means that there is no pH in this uh, system. And since there's no free hydrogen ion or hydronium ion, that there's no calculation. In fact, a lot of these values to me are somewhat suspect. Ionic strength is insanely small because it's pure methanol. Methanol does self dissociate a little bit, but not a whole lot, and so forth. Uh, we can go through all the other things. Here's the composition. And you can see that it's uh, the 100 kilogram moles of uh, methanol I pulled, put in, but you do see that it didn't, in fact, dissociate a little bit. There's a little bit of methylate ions uh, present here. So there is some self-dissociation of methanol. That's not the power of the tool. The block here was set to adiabatic uh, conditions, which is fine. I want to go take a look at the liquid outstream. This is the stream that's produced the mix. 
the whole purpose of this experiment is to see uh, I added methanol to break the gas hydrate that's not represented in this example but then uh, maybe I got some solids so I look at the bulk properties here's nothing uh, really uh, stands out here so I go into electrolytes the pH is about the same but if I go into solids I notice that the scaling tendency this is the value the ratio of the solids uh, the available ions in the solution to the theoretical limit it's one this is an indication that the solid has formed if I look at composition you can see that I've actually formed solid sodium chloride so adding methanol changes the solubility of minerals and this is true for all polar organic solvents that by adding it to an aqueous solution I can lower the solubility of my salts and produce scaling when I was actually trying to prevent another problem so that's the brief overview like I say everything you know about unisim design is still true we have some of our own unit operations which are specific here there's an electrolyte uh, block here which you can't really see let me drag this over uh, we have a neutralizer we have a precipitator and we have a crystallizer uh, there are special units which you can uh, play with but all of the other blocks here are basically unisim blocks the only difference would be these distillation columns when using the OLI fluid package, it's actually using our column code to do its calculations and not the standard Unisim code for that. Anyway, if you have questions, let us know uh, and uh, drop us a, a line uh, via the customer portal and we will answer your questions. Thank you very much for watching.